Hi guys, it's Stephen here. Today in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how you can build a buy to let investment property portfolio from nothing to 10 properties in just three short years. I've been thinking a lot about buy to lets recently as the market's gone crazy over the last 12 months. And in particular, how I can manufacture my profits in the fastest time possible and take advantage of the low interest rates that are currently available at the banks right now. Although those interest rates do look like they're on the rise. So I've put together a blueprint of how I would do this and you can actually get access to it right now for the bargain price of a life. So this is something that anyone can do as long as they earn an income or some kind of salary because you're gonna, at the end of the day, have to qualify for a buy to let mortgage. You don't need to have loads of money to start, but you're gonna need to have some money saved up for your deposit, your stamp duty, and your legal fees. And this is exactly the method that I plan to use when building up my own buy to let portfolio and actually pretty excited by it because I totally think it's achievable. For those of you who don't know me, I've been in property investor for over 20 years and I sold off all of my UK buy to let properties a while back now because I've been living overseas where I've bought commercial and residential property. I've now come back to the UK and I've decided that I wanted to buy commercial real estate for cash flow, which is what I've been doing and I've been talking a bit about those in my, in my uh, videos on the channel. And what I wanna be doing now is focusing more on buy to let some residential real estate, but manufacturing my profits, which is what this is all about. First, we need to find a residential. <laughs> First, we need to find a suitable residential property to buy. Nah, we're not gonna be looking in there. We're gonna be going back to my desk. And first of all, we're gonna look at high yielding postcodes where we should start to look. So let's go. Finding residential property that cash flows will require a bit of research. I've spent some time researching areas where there's a potential for high yields, and these are the areas that I would start to look in for investment property. This is a website that I found as part of my research, and it's really bang up to date with a yield map based on 2022 numbers. And they talk about postcode region. So they're de delving into not just regions, into specific postcodes. But what's interesting to note is that the top 10, there's only one place in the south. Everything's kind of in the north. There's a few in the wa in Wales there. Most buy to let investors head north if they want cash flow. Um, what's interesting is that Liverpool isn't on that top 10 list on any of those postcodes. And even on this list, it's way down in 15. This is where I would be focusing on if I just wanted to buy for cash flow. But if you've watched my videos before, if I'm talking residential, I'm probably trying to get also capital appreciation. Most of these postcodes are up north. So if you live near these postcodes, that's a bonus, but it's not entirely essential that you have to live near where you invest. Well, let me explain why I say that. I bought property in another country and just hired a local property manager to look after that property for me. But first, to mitigate that risk, I went over to that place, checked out that area, walked the streets, interviewed different property managers. I spent a few weeks over in another country doing this. It was in America where I bought these properties. Um, in two different states as well in America. It wasn't even just one state. It doesn't matter where you invest really. You should let the numbers dictate to you where you invest, not the location. In the UK, the average full-time salary is £31,285, which equals monthly £2,807. What we're looking for here is we're setting ourselves a goal to become financially free. So this equates to around £260 per month as our goal for each property. We're dividing that by 10 to achieve our zero to 10 properties and to enable ourselves to become financially free at the same time, assuming you're on an average full-time salary by getting to those 10 properties with that amount of cash flow per property. So the core part of my strategy to be able to get to 10 properties is to go and find properties that need fixing up. Now, the reason why I'm looking for these properties is I wanna add value. This is where I'm manufacturing my profit. So I wanna look for properties that have been neglected, they need a bit of repair, not to the point that they're falling apart, but they need a bit of work done to them. And therefore I can then do that work and hopefully increase the price beyond the amount that I've paid 
for that property and for the work that I've paid on that property, therefore manufacturing a profit. And by doing it this way, we're able to condense the amount of time it takes us to go from one to 10 properties, which I'll explain in a second about how we do that. So you may have seen a show called The Great House Giveaway. Now this show is a bit like Homes Under the Hammer, but the difference is you get to actually see them do the work. Homes Under the Hammer, you just see kind of before and after shots. How about I buy your house auction? Pair you up with a complete stranger. Whereas this one, you actually get to see all the sweat and the hard work that they put into fixing up this home and all the problems that they go through. And so it's quite inspiring, quite motivating, but it gives you a kind of warts and all view of what it's like to actually do this kind of refurb or renovation. This is exactly the type of approach that I'm looking to do. Apart from, I'm probably not gonna get hands on, I would employ a contractor to kind of do the work for me rather than do it myself but that's just me you might want to get hands on and do the work yourself to save yourself even more money because the more work you can do yourself the more profit you're potentially making but with the strategy that we're going for we're not necessarily going to be trying to get a property that needs to go back to its shell because we wouldn't be able to get a buy to let mortgage on that type of property we need something that kind of needs some light fixing up so it might need the bathroom refreshing, the kitchen refreshing, those types of things. But someone could move into it today maybe, but it needs a good decorating, needs a good clean, garden needs fixing up, that type of stuff. It's not necessarily gone to auction. It could be with an agent that with as described as it needs modernizing and that type of thing. I've had different experiences with this. I've done some slight refurb work on properties, buy to lets that I've had in the past that I've owned in the UK. But my biggest task that I've ever done is I put another story on a single story house. Now this was in another country where single story houses are quite commonplace. I basically used a builder to do all the work for me, negotiate a fixed price contract. And you know, that took a certain period of time and there was penalty clauses in there if they run over time and those types of things. Milestone payments, money was borrowed from a bank to pay those milestone payments as we progress through the different phases of that build. So with my strategy to get to 10 properties in three years, I'm not looking to do renovations or extensions or add other stories on anything. I'm just looking to kind of do that light refurb work, bathrooms, kitchens, painting, that type of thing. I'm not looking to extend, might knock down internal walls, that kind of thing that are non-structural. So anything that's non-structural, I'll potentially do. Structural stuff that requires planning, try to stay away from. So let's find out how we're gonna get from zero to 10 properties in 36 months. So I'm gonna be looking in NG7 in Nottingham, which was on the top of that list of the track capital, best yield postcodes. So we can, here is just this quick scan of me going through Rightmove and finding similar types of property. This property was up at auction, it was up for 68 grand. And there was another one that went to auction as well and sold around 80,000 pounds. So these are the types of properties to look for. These ones may be okay to get a buy to let mortgage on, maybe need a bit too much work. What I'm looking to do is look at what I can then sell these properties for. And as I'm looking through, I'm looking through the already sold properties list and finding that they've been sold for between 160,000 and 180,000 pounds. So depending on what our buy price is, we should be able to make a decent amount of profit. So we've got our first property, we're gonna refurbish, we're gonna, it's gonna take us six months to get through there. So we need to make sure that we've got, as I said before, we've had our deposit, we've got our stamp duty and legals that we're covered. We need to have that amount of money saved up and that will determine how much that is, will determine which location you're looking in. If it's up north, you'll need less money. If it's in the south, you need more money. And don't be forgetting, you're actually gonna to need to have some spare cash for the refurb of that property. You can also borrow that money if you need to via a bridging loan. You can even nowadays get a refurbishment buy to let mortgage, which allows you to get a certain amount of proportion up front to buy the property. And then they'll give you another load of money to do the actual refurbishment once you've bought that property. With bridging loans, you're able to get access to your money between five to seven days. So that's probably what most people will do is get a quick bridging loan you know, six to nine months, but you wanna be making sure you pay it off within six months. It's expensive to get a bridging loan. So you need to factor in that interest payment in all of your costs, because you wanna make sure that 
what you're buying for, plus your refurb, plus your interest that you've got to pay, your holding costs are not going to be more than the property is going to be worth at the end of all the work that you're going to be doing in six months time. So we've now completed our first property. It's six months later. So we've got a decision to make about what we're going to do with this property, our exit strategy, as some people would call it. Are we going to sell it or are we going to refinance it? Now, there's two trains of thought with this one. If we're going to sell it, you're going to have to pay capital gains tax because you've not lived in it. It's just been an investment. So any gain that you've made on that property is up for capital gains tax, which might be worth doing because depending on how much that profit is, you only pay capital gains over £12,300 and therefore it's only going to be a small percentage of what the difference is between your profit and that capital gain if you've not claimed any capital gain in the current tax year. The other side is you can refinance it but when you refinance it you always have to leave some money in the deal which is called equity and you can likely think that you've got to leave 20% behind in that property so you can't get access to all your money. Capital with selling it through and paying capital gains tax, you get access to all your money minus the capital gains tax cost that you've got to pay. So that's something that you need to decide for yourself, which one of those two makes sense for you. For me, I'll try and refinance, take the money out, and at least I'll get my initial deposit back out, and then, or near enough most of that, and then that gives me the money to go again onto the next property. With property two, we're gonna be doing something slightly different again. With this one, the plan would be here to JV, joint venture, to buddy up with another property investor. Now this is because we want to leverage our experience that we've now got from completing the first property, which took us six months to do. We can take that to the property investor and say, this is what I've just done. This is the money I made, the profit I made from this. How about we do something similar and we can just split the profits. Ultimately, what we're looking for is an investor that's going to put down the deposit and also get the loan. And you're not putting any money into the deal here other than your time, experience, and you'll look after the deal. So it's up to you whether you project manage it, whether you get hands on and work with contractors to do the work, and then you just split the profits 50-50 at the end of the deal. And you'd make sure that you signed a contract between you, get something written up that's kind of just basic, that just says what the deal is, who's responsible for what, what's the profit split, what's the exit strategy. Now to find people to buddy up with, you wanna be going to property meetup groups. There's enough of them around different areas up and down the country in the UK, and you're gonna find someone that's at a similar level to you, maybe not done any development yet, but has got was looking to buy a buy-to-let property. You can pitch them with your approach as to how they can manufacture their profits rather than they just gotta buy and hold for a certain amount of time. Now property three comes from where you've got your money from property one, the cash back out from that one, you go and do the same thing again as property one, you buy this one on your own, and again it takes you six months to get that one done. But with this one, the thing that we're doing differently here is we're gonna run that at the same time as property two with our JV partner. We're also doing one on our own, at the same time, six months. So you've got two properties to look after in that six month time frame. So this might come down to we could try and look for properties in the same area, it might make sense because that's where you've already done one and you might be able to find more opportunities in that same area for the next two properties if you know what you're looking for, which you should do if you're starting to really understand that local area now. You may find this difficult running two parallel projects at the same time, especially if you're in a full-time job, but you should know what needs to be done. You've got the experience, you can plan out what needs to be done, who needs to do what, but this is an important way that you and I are gonna be able to get to that 10 properties in that three year time frame. So once property two and three are done, six months later, we're now at a point where we need to decide on the exit strategy for property two. When you joint venture, when you're buddying up with someone, it's likely that the exit strategy is to sell because you're not life partners or anything like that. You wanna go your separate ways. You wanna get your profit and go. So you're paying capital gains tax, but again, it's split between you. If neither of you have claimed any capital gains tax so far, that means you both get around £12,000 tax-free from capital gain. In the previous example, if you were earning 50000 a year, the capital gains that you would pay is £3,669. 
and that would be divided by two because there's two of you so that's all you'd have to pay capital gains tax so not even two thousand pounds each if you were to sell that property for 160 grand having bought it for 120 plus refurb so with property three the exit strategy there would be the same as property one just refinance that get the cash out put that money down to go again on another property so at the end of year one we've done three out of our ten properties now we're into year two so property four and property five we're doing parallel we're doing those two at the same time and with the first one here that we'd likely to do is we're going to buddy up with someone again now this means that we will do the same thing. It could be that if the first one was successful, that person wants to go with you again. If not, you've had this time a year now where you should have been networking with like-minded people, talking to them about what you're doing, getting people inspired and motivated by what you're doing, and that they wanna then kind of buddy up with you and understand what you're doing along the way but again, you're not putting any money in these deals. They're putting everything into it, which sometimes it might work, sometimes it might not work. You might have to do 50-50 on the deposit, which you could do because you've got some money from the sale of the other one and you've got the refinance out. So it's up to you how you play that one. But for me, I'd be trying to angle that I'm not putting any money in the deal. It's just my time. You'll look after the whole refurbishment process. And the other person's just like a silent partner that you give weekly updates or things like that to. Property five then, again, this you do on your own and you use the money from the, the other properties in year one to put down as a deposit on this one. So you could go with a slightly bigger deal if you wanted to now, or just put, or just keep going, doing the same thing that you've done so far in the same area, that kind of price point you know, the 120 grand or so. The exit strategy again would just be to refinance. So you wanna be holding this property and you're trying to make sure that your cash flow that 260 pounds per month to meet our financial free goal of that 31 grand a year. And with property six and property seven, again, we're gonna parallel these two. Property six would be a JV with, a, with another property investor. It could be the same one as before or a new one that you've built up a reputation now, you're gonna be able to find buddies to joint venture with out there. And again, you'd look for the similar types of property, no money down. Property seven, you're gonna be doing on your own and you're gonna be using the money from the previous property you put into this one that you're then gonna refinance out of. And by now, everything would be like clockwork, hopefully. You know what to do, you know what you're looking for, you know how long things take, you know the risks easier, you know what to look out for. Probably now got a power team of builders around you that will know what you're expecting, the quality of finish that you want, and just be able to get in and out, and you should hopefully be able to knock that six months down to a shorter time frame. But we're still allowing six months I would say anything between three and six months that you could achieve these types of things. So at the end of year two now, we've done seven property transactions. Now we're into year three, and it's the same principle again. We're gonna to look to JV with someone for property eight and sell that property, pay the capital gains tax, and we part friends. We, we split the profits. And property nine and property 10, you can potentially do yourself rather than JV with the money that you've got from the other ones, from the JV and the deposit from the refinances. So you've got potentially two properties that you can do yourself. So that's nine and 10 we can do now. Same principles, look for the same types of properties, refinance those properties out so we can keep going. So there we've got to 10 properties in three years. We could actually get to 11. We would parallel a cut eight and nine together and then 10 would just be done on that last one, but you could JV again with someone to get to 11 in that in that 36 month time frame if you really wanted to. So after three years, you've got no end of experience, you've done 10 property transactions, you may not own all of those properties because you've sold them to enable you to get going. So you might be left with say six, depends on your exit strategy with JV, but I've just shown you a way that you can go from zero to 10 properties within 36 months. So I hope that's given you some inspiration and motivation. You can actually go out there and build your own property portfolio from zero to 10 properties in three years. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.